I get it. Most of us bought our hot tubs just to be able to soak in and relax in and enjoy. We don't want to be chemists, we don't want to be repair people, and we don't want to spend all day 24-7 trying to fix and balance everything in our hot tubs, right? Yeah! Right. So, this video is all about hot tub maintenance for beginners. Skipping all of the fancy stuff, all the extra stuff, all the nuances that aren't necessarily basic. And today we're just getting into the basics that you need to know about how to maintain and operate your hot tub. That way you can get to soaking and relaxing faster. So if I had to boil it down to just a few basic things that every hot tub owner needs to know, it would be water chemistry, in other words, balancing the water and keeping it clean, keeping the chlorine, alkalinity, and pH levels correct, and then changing that water regularly about every three or four months in most cases, and then also maintaining your filters. Every hot tub has at least one filter in it. Mine has two, and it's important to clean those about every three or four weeks, and we're going to do that later in this video so you can see exactly how I do that, and then doing a deep chemical soak about every three months. And I'm not going to show you that today, but I do have another video that gets into all of the detail on that. I'm going to link to that in the description down below, and you'll see a card for it at the end of this video too. That's what we're doing today. Okay, I mentioned water chemistry a minute ago, and when you go to the store, whether it's Home Depot or Walmart or a, a pool and hot tub supply store, you're going to see all kinds of things on the shelves there. But really, to get started, you just need a few basic things. For starters, you need a sanitizer. This is either going to be chlorine or bromine. I prefer bromine, but there are pluses and minuses to both. I've got a video, and I'm going to link to that in the description. You'll also see a card for it at the end of this video, where I get into all of the details about why I prefer bromine, but I go, go through the pluses and the minuses of both. That way you can make the right decision for you. But you need a sanitizer, and you're going to add that to your water probably two or three times a week, depending upon how often you use your hot tub. Then you need a shock. A shock is either going to be chlorine or non-chlorine, and you're going to add that about once a week. That revitalizes the sanitizer. That doesn't mean you never add sanitizer again, though, but it revitalizes the sanitizer. That way, when you dip your test strip in, you're getting correct levels. You're going to, like I said, you're going to add that about once a week. I prefer a chlorine shock, but either one is okay. Then you simply need to balance the alkalinity and the pH. I'm going to get into the differences between those two a little bit later in the video because they can be very confusing. But you, just, you do need chemicals to bring pH and alkalinity up or down depending upon the pH and alkalinity of your tap water. The last thing I want to mention is water hardness. And by that I mean calcium hardness. The water that comes out of your tap and your hose is either going to be hard water, meaning it has a lot of calcium, or it's going to be soft water, meaning it doesn't have a lot of calcium. You'll know if your water is hard because you're going to see a lot of scale buildup, especially around the shower head in your bathrooms. And you may want to treat your water if you see a lot of that scale buildup in your bathroom because water that's super hard is bad for the hot tub. Now, that being said, water that is super soft is also bad for the hot tub. You really kind of want it to be in the middle. And there are chemicals you can use to bring the hardness up or down. I'm going to link to my favorite ones in the description below. But you do want to pay attention to that, especially if you're seeing signs of scale buildup around the shower heads in your bathroom. So I mentioned that I prefer bromine for my sanitizer, and I did mention that I'm going to link to one of my other videos in the description and at the end of this one, so you can really dive deep into that. But I do want to give you just a quick snapshot. Essentially, bromine takes the heat a lot better than chlorine does. Heat destroys chlorine. So if you're using chlorine as your sanitizer, you have to add it more frequently throughout the course of the week. The bromine is going to stay in the water longer. Bromine is a little bit more expensive than chlorine is, but like I said, you're going to last longer using bromine, which means you don't have to add it as frequently, which means you won't be spending as much, even though it's a little bit more expensive than chlorine. So that's one of the main reasons why I like bromine better. Also, you don't get that chlorine smell as much with bromine as you do with chlorine. That, you know, that when you go to a public pool and it's 
burning and it's, it's hurting your eyes and stuff. You don't really get that with bromine unless it's way over the normal tolerance level. So that's another great thing about bromine. So I know this video is all about hot tub maintenance for beginners. So I just want to quickly mention something called biofilm though. And biofilm is a bacterial buildup inside the plumbing of your hot tub. I have another video dedicated all to that subject and how to get rid of it. I'm going to put that link in the show description as well. However, if you're noticing that you're adding sanitizer and shock more often than you used to, and it still never really gets the levels where they should be, you probably probably have a biofilm buildup in your plumbing. You're never going to see it because it's inside the plumbing, but it's robbing your shock and your sanitizer of being able to do that job properly. And that's unsafe for the people soaking in your hot tub. So you need to get rid of it. The best way to get rid of it is when you're changing your hot tub water. And no, just changing the water doesn't get rid of it because it's still in the pipes. And then you just put fresh water back in there and then that new water gets infected with the biofilm. But there's a product, and I'm going to link to that in the description, that gets rid of it. And I pour it in right before I change my water. And I've got a great video on how to change your water in just 15 minutes. And I'm going to link to that in the description too. But I add it to my water before I change it. I turn the jets on and I let it run for an hour. It gets rid of the biofilm buildup. Then I drain my hot tub, clean it out, fill it back up, treat the water, and I'm good to go. So I just mentioned that I can drain my hot tub in just 15 minutes. That's pretty amazing considering most people just hook a garden hose up to it, let it drain over the course of two or three hours. I can drain mine in 15 minutes. How do I do that? I use something called a submersible pump. I'm going to link to my favorite one on Amazon in the description down below. I also have another video that shows you every step of the way of how to use that. I'm going to put that in the description too, but let me show it to you right now. This is it here. I literally just plug it into a regular wall outlet and then I drop this entire thing including the electrical cord into the hot tub. And then it has a 25 foot hose that I just run to an inconspicuous part of the yard. It starts working the moment it is fully underwater. This thing detects whether or not it's submerged. If it's not submerged, it won't power on. But once you have it fully in the water, it just comes on and starts draining the hot tub. And like I said, I can do it in about 15 minutes. Look for that description down below for both the video and the submersible pump. And that way you can drain your hot tub in just 15 minutes also. So I mentioned a little earlier that I was going to explain the difference between pH and alkalinity. After all, they can be very confusing for most people and they are related when you treat one, it does affect the other, but they're also very different. So it's a little important, we don't have to be chemists, but it's a little important to understand the differences between the two and how they relate to one another. So pH, as you probably know, is simply a measure of how alkaline or acidic your water is. It's somewhere on that scale and you want your pH to be somewhere around 7.2 to 7.6. And if it's too alkaline, then you need to bring the pH up to make it a little bit more acidic and vice versa as well. Alkalinity, by comparison, measures the ability of your water to neutralize acid. And if it can't neutralize acid, then you'll never be able to bring the pH down. That's how they are related. Sometimes you'll see products that say spa up or spa down, and those affect both the pH and the alkalinity. But you'll also see products designed to impact each of those separately also. And when you can find those products, I prefer that. That way I can balance one without significantly affecting the other. Like I said though, you'll almost always affect one when you treat the other. So just bear that in mind when you dip your test strip in and you add a chemical, you're going to want to check it again just to see how it impacted the other one. So we've talked about water chemistry and draining and refilling your hot tub with some regularity. Those are two of the three big things that all beginning hot tub owners need to know about. The third thing is filter maintenance. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, it's important to clean your filters. And I use the sprayer at my kitchen sink. It's important to clean those filters about every three or four weeks and then do a deep chemical soak about every three months or so. So right now I'm going to show you exactly how I clean my filters doing my clean that, like I said, I do about every three or four weeks. So let's get into that now. Okay. 
I'm here in my kitchen now. As you can see, the plates are folded over pieces of paper, essentially. So you really want to spread them apart with your fingers and get down in between each and every single one as you spray the water down. You can use hot water or cold water, but I kind of prefer using hot or at least warm water to really get that thoroughly clean. Open up each pleat and really make sure you're rinsing out the debris that's in there. Sometimes it can be kind of coated on like film-like kind of debris and, and gunk inside of there. So you really want to take your time here and not rush this and really get it thoroughly clean. So I mentioned calcium hardness earlier in the video and how you need to treat your water if your water is hard water, meaning it has high levels of calcium. And I wanted to just quickly show you the product that I use to do that. Out here in the country where we live, our water is very high in calcium. You see tons of scale buildup around our shower head. That lets me know that this water is really hard and needs to be treated. We have a water softener system for the house, but it doesn't affect what's coming out of the garden hose, which is what I use to fill up my hot tub with. So I like this product from Leisure Time called Defender. It's great for not only lowering the hardness of my water, but also getting rid of any scale buildup that's already in here and then preventing new scale buildup. It's a great product. You don't have to use a ton of it. I've got a whole video, and I mentioned this earlier, that breaks down all of the best hot tub chemicals to get. I'm going to link to that one in the description, but I'll also put a link directly for this product too, just in case you have hard water like I do. Once again, thank you so much for being here. My name is Jeff Campbell. This is my channel, Hot Tub Owner HQ. I also have my website, hottubownerhq.com. I'm sharing all of my best tips here with you, and I know there's going to be something I cover in a future video that you're going to need help with. So smash that subscribe button and the bell notification button, and I'd love it if you gave me a thumbs up for this video too. It's a great way to tell YouTube that this is a quality video that other hot tub owners need to find. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.